few weeks ago I was at Fanuc doing a live event where a robo drill was cut in stainless steel. Today I'm going to see that operation happening here at a customer's. Here at RNG Precision, you are big fans of the Fanuc robo drills. I mean, Phil, you've got six five axes here. That's correct. Why have they been such a popular choice for the company? It's it's just the versatility, really. Uh, we are able to do all, all it's full five axis, so we can do virtually every part of the component in a one basically. Uh, it may be split between two ops in the same machine, but we'll complete the component from start to finish. Okay, now our, when, when you look at five axis, often we see um, you know bigger machines, much heavier machines with knuckle tables. Why did you go for, let's say, the more compact solution that we have here? Well, because it's five axes, believe it or not, everything is contained in a very small area anyway. Uh, ass ass assuming the component is not much bigger than, say, 200 mil in diameter, maybe even a little bit more than that, it will fit everything you need. So you don't need to go for a no, bigger machine? No, You're not talking like three vices in a row. You don't need that. Everything is in that, lo that local area. And a lot of people would, would look at a, a robo drill and think, OK, well, you know, is it capable of, of cutting you know, all these different materials? And as I started this video, we did do a live event at Fanuc where we cut stainless, but you guys are actually proof here that it does happen out on site too. So maybe could you tell us about the part that you've got here? Yes, this, this is a, it's a, lo it's a lovely component. Hard to believe that it starts off as a round bar. Uh, and, what, and why does it start off as a round bar? It's, it starts off as a round bar because this particular grade of stainless is only available in, in a diameter format. Okay, so what's the grade? 304 stainless. Okay, all right. So, and the machine handles, we'll talk about the operations, but there's no issues with the machine. No, no, vibration, no. Vibration, chatter. No, 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 not at all, no, no. Okay, so no. tell us what you do. Walk us through the... the okay, the so as we can see, it starts off as a round bar. Uh, then... Uh, it's, it's uh, sort of, I call it a, an interim op, which essentially gets rid of, sort of roughs it essentially. It looks right? like you've got rid of most of the material. Yeah, we've roughed it. And it's all, all using a uh, tricordial milling, which means there's no load, no heavy load on the cutters, of which of course transfers to the, the, the machine not being wor overworked really. And I, was, I suppose that the speed of these machines and, and, and the dynamicness makes that a very smooth cutting operation. Absolutely, yeah. T absolutely, yeah. Okay, so that's what you end it. So basically, I imagine that you're taking that bar, machining, you know, off, off the top and then off the bottom, and then the trachoidal comes into play with that in that operation. That's that correct, right? yes, that's right. So if you had to look at the whole production time for the part that we see here, from the bar through to the finished part, an estimation, because I appreciate you probably don't know exactly, but roughly what would it be? Uh, we'll go for 40 minutes, for, for 40 minutes, all the way through from start to finish. And when you're machining this on this machine, is there any other factors you have to take into consideration when you're doing stainless? Do you have to back off a bit on feeds and speeds? No. Or is that not? If anything, with tricordal milling, we, we, we up the ante a bit, you know, um, yeah. If you're doing uh, deep hole drilling, then we have to just maybe pull back slightly but nothing more nothing nothing and uh, nothing untoward so if you had um, within the machine shop any exotic material come through here would you ever take it away from these machines because you'd be concerned that it couldn't handle it or would no, you automatically not, not at all no no not at all no no we don't think like that we don't think like well let's take it off the machine no it's it's utilizing the machine for what it can do and it's more than capable of doing those difficult jobs absolutely well the the machine just to the, just behind you is producing brass components all day long and would you sometimes say that you'll do brass on this one one day, stainless the next, aluminium the next? It changes it... daily, all the time. Yeah. And, and there's no there's no provision you have to make for the swarf clearance or the evacuation. We always or... have to uh, uh, segregate the swarf, yes, because uh, they don't like to contaminate the two, the two swarfs. But it, it's it's only a case of just clearing the the remains of what went before. We use the the, the jet wash for that, which is supplied on the machines as well. And how reliable are they, Phil? Well, they never miss a beat, and well, not in the years that I've used one. <laughs> and anyone considering a big machining centre, just because they want to machine exotic materials, do they need to maybe change the way they think and think about a robo drill? Absolutely, yeah, definitely, yeah, def definitely. And yeah, change the way they think about the machining centre, and also how, how you machine things. The way we machine things isn't like we did 10 years ago, it really isn't. 
So that's when these machines become into their own, in my opinion.